Hello students. Today we start with the next topic of first chapter that is flow chart. Okay. In the last lecture we discussed about the tool algorithm. So which is uh, we used to write the solution of a problem. But however it can be get sometimes lengthy and complicated. So uh, there is the next tool or a second tool we have that is flowchart. So what is flowchart is? Flowchart is actually a diagrammatic or pictorial representation of an algorithm. A flowchart as it is a diagrammatic way of specifying the solution, it is a, a program design tool uh, in which the standard graphical symbols are used to represent the logical flow of data. Okay. Now we see the symbols which we used for the flowchart. The first symbol is called as terminal. It is a rounded rectangle. Okay. This symbol which is named as terminal is indicates the start and stop of the process means these are act as an a terminal of the flowchart means the starting of flowchart and end of the flowchart is indicated by this symbol now the second symbol is a tailed rectangle and it is named as input or output this symbol indicates an input or output task which we are performing in solving the problem. Uh, inputting means what we, we read the number or we input the radius. Output means we display the area or uh, we display some. Okay. So these are the input and output tasks. Now the third symbol is a rectangle and it is named as process. And this symbol contains all type of arithmetic and assignment task means all type of processing operations we are going to write in this process symbol okay any simple arithmetic expression like uh, uh, sum is equal to n1 plus n2 or area is equal to pi r square or whatever this type of a plain processing statements we can write here now after that the next symbol which is a diagonal is called as decision the name is decision it indicates a condition and two or more alternatives means the condition is like if n is greater than zero so you have two alternatives for that either it is true or it is false. So if it is true then what? And if it is false then what? So this decision making is done by using this symbol. That's why it is named as decision. Now the next symbols we have just named as flow lines. Means it shows actually the flow of or direction of flow. The logical flow of the solution is going to be indicated by using these flow lines. So the arrow is there which indicates the direction of flow. Okay. The next symbol is called as module call. Now this is used for calling an external modules. Means when we are uh, taking the data or uh, we connect our uh, solution with the outer solution by using module call. After that, the next symbol is called as connector. It is a circle. It is called as a connector and it is used to connect the different flow lines or used to show the continuity of flowchart on a separate pages. Means suppose you are drawing the flowchart and if it is not get completed in a one page. So you are going to continue on the next page. But when you continue on the next page and that at that time on the previous page 
you have to write draw the connector name that connector a b c whatever and then again on the next page draw the connector and give the name so it indicates the continuation of your flow chart after that the next um, symbol is called as block so it indicates the block of statements okay but very rarely we can we used it but for a simple flow chart uh, we uh, never use this symbol but it is uh, used basically for high level flow charts now the last symbol is called as multi way selection uh, this symbol allows the selection of one out of many alternatives means here uh there is some condition and there are multiple alternatives not only two there are suppose here accordingly there are four alternatives okay and the from that four alternatives we can get whatever the simple result single results so it allows the selection of one out of many alternatives from this alternative it can go through any one way so it is called as a multi way selection symbol so these are the symbols we can use to draw the flow chart to solve the problem okay now before going for the examples of flow chart we go for some basic control structures we used in a programs so we use three types of basic control structures in that the first is sequence of statements means the statements are specified in a sequence the second type of a control structure is like decision making and third is repetition in that two types of testing is there top and bottom tested of repetition are there now how these situations uh, we can represent it by using flow chart okay that we we can now look at the first diagram that is represents the sequence or sequence of statements it shows the sequence of steps which are performed one after another now look at this second diagram it is called as decision making means what look at here in this diagram whatever the previous process is there when there is a decision symbol whatever the condition there are two alternatives either that condition evaluates true or it evaluates false if it is true so depend on that the decision is that we are executing the true side process and then go for next but if it is evaluates to false then the false side process is going to be executed and then it goes to next so in this way the decision making statements are represented now look at the third control structure that is repetition in that repetition you have two types that is top tested and bottom tested the first we see the top tested what happen in a top tested means first the condition is going to be test and if it is true means first the condition is tested and if it evaluates to true then the next processing is carried out and it again goes to goes for the next repetition that is next iteration so that it is called as a top tested means first condition is get tested and then processing is done and then again repeat uh, the process for the next value okay now you have a second type that is repetition but with bottom tested what happen in a bottom tested look at here here what ha happen here the process is first execute some processing statements are e uh, executed first then we check the condition and if it is evaluates true then we can go back and then again process the statement so here what happen here at the end that's why it is called as a bottom tested at the end we test the condition and then we 
if it is true then we go back and again process the statement okay so this is called as a bottom tested and here first is top tested in a top tested first condition is checked and then the statement will be executed repeatedly and in bottom tested first statement is executed and then the condition will be checked okay now we see some examples the first example is draw a flow chart to calculate area of circle we already done the algorithm for this problem so you know the logic of solution so here how we draw the flow chart so every flow chart it start with terminal and first terminal is your start terminal then next for to find the area of circle what you required you required one input that input is nothing but radius so we first input the value of radius okay then after that we calculate the area of circle by using radius so the processing statement is area is equal to 3.14 which is a value of pi into radius into radius okay so here we calculate the value of area now we just have to display that value that result and for that we draw display area symbol and then as the area is uh, done we can already calculated the area that's why we terminate the flow chart by using stop okay in this way we can calculate uh, or draw the flow chart to calculate area of circle now the second example is to check if a number is even or odd so we are starting with the terminal symbol that is start then what we have to check the number which is even or odd so what input we need we need a number okay that's why the second step is we input or we read the number then you have to check whether it is even or odd or how we check it if we divide that by 2 any remainder which we get is zero then if remainder is zero then it is even number and if it remainder is not zero then it is odd number so if it is true means if your number mod 2 is equal to zero you get the remainder zero then you just display the output display number is even and if it is false means to uh, the answer you get of this process or operation is not zero then you display the message that is number is odd and after that you are just stop the process that's why stop terminal is here okay now the third example is uh, we are going to draw the flow chart to calculate sum of first n numbers means 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to plus n okay so we have to calculate the sum of first n numbers so first when we say first n number so it is start from 1 up to whatever the value of that n so what is the first step again we start with the terminal then next we must need know the value of n na so then we can terminate that's why we have to read the value of n that is read n then next we are going to initialize the value of sum to 0 we have to calculate the sum now that's why we initialize the value of sum to 0 then we initialize the value of num also to 1 because we have the first number is what 1 that's why we initialize it to 1 then we calculate the sum that is sum is equal to sum plus num so your sum is initially 0 and in that zero we we are going to add num that is 1 so your sum become 1 next we also increase the value of num for the next number so num is equal to num plus 1 and then we check if your number is less than or equal to n means is the number is less than or equal to n if it is less than n means 
you have to again go for the next repetition next iteration in that case if it is true the number which you get is less than n then you again go back to calculate the sum okay and then again we increase the value of num by 1 again we check whether the number is less than or equal to n and up to the number is less than or equal to n we are going to repeat these three steps okay and in this way we can calculate the sum of first n numbers so when it is true when it become false means your value of number becomes larger than n so you evaluate to false means all the numbers are get added it means and you just display the result that is sum and then stop okay in this way you can calculate the sum of first n numbers okay now we see some advantages of flowchart okay so the first advantage is as it is a pictorial representation it can be understood very easily you can understand it as as it is in a diagrammatic form so you can easily get the logic the second it is it is very easy to identify the errors means if there is any uh, wrong uh, execution or error is occur that you can easily identify third advantage is process and data flow can be easily traced for all possible cases means the all possible cases for the true values for the false values you can easily test the flow of data as well as process the next advantage is it is a general purpose tool and it is language independent means this is not uh, depend upon any programming language so it is you can implement it for any type of a problem so there is no limitation of a programming language on that and the last advantage is it is very easy to write a program from the flow chart so you have all the steps processes input output decision making statement everything is there so you can easily convert the flow chart into the program okay so these are the advantages of flow chart now the disadvantages of flow chart the first disadvantage is very often a flow chart become very lengthy and runs into the pages so sometimes for a complicated process or a lengthy process it become difficult to draw the flow chart the second disadvantage is modifying a flow chart is very difficult so when it, when you complete your flow chart and then you recognize that so here i i just uh, uh, do the wrong step or the process is wrong then at that time you have to just rub it again uh, if you draw it with the pencil if it is up with the pen then you again have to draw the new flow chart so modifying the flow chart is sometimes become very difficult and the third disadvantage is it is a time consuming process isn't it because you have to draw every symbol in that symbol you have to write a, a proper name and then for a decision the arrow you have to show the proper flow so it is uh, sometimes become a time consuming process okay so student here we complete the topic flow chart okay thank you